If you are familiar with Wisconsin, you've probably heard of the Driftless Area. Just as its name suggests, the Driftless Area was never covered by glaciers. As a result, no sediment or drift was left behind. The Driftless Area consists of about 24,000 square miles in the upper Midwest, mainly southwest Wisconsin. It may include very small slivers of southeast Minnesota, northeast Iowa, and certainly includes the northwest corner of Illinois. While the rest of Wisconsin was covered by multiple huge ice sheets over the last 2.5 million years, this large area of southwest Wisconsin provided a refuge for life and preserved pre-glacial landforms and waterways. Because the driftless area was never modified and sculpted by glaciers, its landforms and topography are different from the other areas of the state. Here, the landscape was formed through erosion by rivers. Over millions of years, rivers have cut downward through the layers of sandstone and dolomite bedrock, creating a landscape so very different from the rolling hills of till and glacial landforms in the eastern part of the state. Deep stream valleys, steep valley walls, and high bedrock bluffs dominate the landscape. One can actually see hundreds of feet of elevation difference separating ridge tops from valley bottoms. Rockhounds delight because the bedrock is often exposed right at the Earth's surface, or only buried by a few feet of silt that was blown in by the wind thousands of years ago. Across the southern part of the state, most of the solid bedrock is made up of alternating layers of sandstone and dolomite. Dolomite is a type of limestone. These very old rocks were deposited as sediment sometime between 450 and 500 million years ago. The sandstones were deposited as river sediment, beaches, and sand dunes that once existed here. The dolomite was deposited as lime mud at times when this part of Wisconsin was covered by shallow seas. Yes, shallow tropical seas. The sand and lime mud were compressed and hardened into stone over millions of years. In the driftless area, the layers of sandstone and dolomite bedrock can be very close to the Earth's surface because no till was deposited there. By contrast, in areas across southern Wisconsin, east of the Johnstown Terminal Moraine, where the landscape was covered by glacial ice, the bedrock is often covered by thick layers of glacial till, and the bedrock is typically only visible where the till is thin. Not surprisingly, the driftless area provided a refuge for plants, animals, and humans during the Ice Age. While life would be difficult or impossible below the ice, this area was a place where plants could thrive, animals could graze, and humans could hunt and shelter. Over time, much has changed. Today we experience quite a different climate and ecosystems, but the roots of life go back to pre-glacial times. You don't have to go far to visit the Driftless Area, where you can take in the natural wonders of the land untouched by ice. Although Pope Farm Conservancy isn't part of the Driftless Area, you'll find it just down the road. If you look to the southwest from the top of the picnic area in the Conservancy, you can see a low hill a few miles away, a part of the Johnstown Terminal Moraine. This marks the farthest distance that the ice sheet traveled during the Wisconsin glaciation, and the driftless area begins on the west side of the moraine. 